morning to the Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online viewers, radio listeners via St. Martigo Radio 107.9 FM and respective radio stations island-wide. I'm Raleika Roach and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. At this time, I would like to invite the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Anna Richardson, to address you. Minister Richardson, you have the virtual floor. Good morning, Honorable Prime Minister, colleague ministers, members of the press, Ms. Roach, and the listening and viewing public. Firstly, I'd like to take a moment to send condolences to my family on the passing of the matriarch of our family, Ms. Baby Eureka Brian Richardson Illis, who transitioned on Friday, March 5th, 2021. She was the last of the great generation in our family and we will truly miss her, but she remains a great icon in our lives. We love you. The immigration management team would like to hereby inform the public that due to the upgrading of the phone systems, it will be a bit difficult to contact the department via telephone lines. As an alternative form of communication, however, management is hereby asking and encouraging everyone from this point forward to please use the following email address, immigration at S-I-N-T-M-A-A-R-T-E-N-Gov.org. So immigration at St. Martin with S-I-N-T, gov.org to make contact with the department rather than calling. In addition, the management team advises that newly updated residence application forms have been uploaded to the St. Martin Gov website and or to the Ministry of Justice.sx website. We thank you kindly for your understanding and cooperation as we look forward to continuously improving the services we provide. Coming out of KPSM, the police department has recognized that over the last few days since the schools have resumed in class session, the traffic situation in the vicinity of the school district of St. Peter's in South Reward has become a challenge. The police force are looking into different options in an effort to try and alleviate this situation. Preliminary research, however, shows that driver's behavior is one of the major contributors to traffic congestion. In short, the police will be reallocating extra manpower uh, to the area and working along with partners and schools during the peak hours with hope of creating a smoother flow of traffic. At the same time, they are requesting that drivers um, and bus drivers, parents who are driving their schools, their children to school to please abide by the traffic rules when it comes to picking up and dropping off your children. Avoid stopping in the middle of the road to walk your students or your children into or uh, in, to the school. They're asking you to please pull over and allow the students to cross the street. Uh, Rolaika, as you so mentioned earlier, I have to exit a press briefing. I have a 10 a.m. meeting that I have to prepare for. So I'm asking and the members of the media to please email any questions you may have and saying will be responded to. Thank you for the opportunity. Good morning. Thank you, Minister Richardson, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Dr. Anders Rudolf Samuel to address you. Minister Samuel, you have the virtual floor. Thank you, Rolaika, and good morning to you. Good morning, PM. Good morning to my colleagues. Good morning to the members of the media present, and good morning to the people of St. Martin. I would like the public to know that the Caribbean Safe School Initiative Virtual Pre-Ministerial Forum begins on Monday, March 15th with the sitting of Caribbean Ministers of Education. The forum will take place virtually from March 15th through March 26th and comprises of six technical sessions that are open to the general public. I am encouraging persons who are interested in school safety to register for the technical sessions via the forum registration platform. And the forum registration platform can be found on the Facebook page of Student Support Services Division. The technical sessions are as follows. Technical session one, school safety focal points discussion. Technical session two, National Disaster Management Office's Directors, 
technical session three, intersectorial partners, technical session four, youth, technical session five, practitioners, which are educators, teachers, principals, and communities, and technical session six, school, sa school safety investments as a key element of economic recovery. This forum is a unique opportunity for us to learn and share experiences with our Caribbean brothers and sisters. For further information, you may contact the Student Support Services Division at 543-1235. I repeat, 543-1235. On Sunday, March 7, 2021, the St. Martin Sports and Olympic Federation held its annual general meeting and sports conference. The event, which took place at the Bel Air Community Center with representatives from several sports organizations, including swimming, baseball, basketball, football, fencing, drag racing, automotive, pool and billiard, and judo and cycling. During the program, representatives of the St. Martin Sports and Olympic Federation observed a moment of silence for the island's baseball legend, the late Atien Artson. 2020 has been a challenging year for sports, not only on St. Martin, but throughout the world. Preparations for international games have all been impacted due to the pandemic. The Ministry of Education, Culture and Sports is fully committed to sports in general and will do all that is within its power to ensure that the 2021 season is a successful year for sports. Yesterday, the Division of Public Education, manager, staff, and students of Marie Genevieve, the Weaver School, celebrated a very symbolic day, the 106th birthday of teacher Marie Genevieve, the Weaver, affectionately known as Teacher Jenny or Miss Jenny. This was done in a wreath laying ceremony to honor her dedication and her love towards education. Rolaika, I would end here and I will await any questions. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Samuel, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication, the Honorable Lutmila Deweaver, to address you. Minister Deweaver, you have the virtual floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to you. Good morning, Prime Minister, colleague ministers, members of the press, and the viewing and listening public. Just a few quick announcements, actually, from Teat. Uh, yesterday, uh, we released a, an article uh, regarding uh, noise complaints that relate to our citizens as well as our visitors. That information, that press release contains the information where um, the public can actually launch their complaints. It is teat, T-E-A-T-T -T complaints, plural at stmartingov.org. That will also be released on our on our website and Facebook page in order that it is current and, and, and up to date for the public to continuously be viewing. <clears throat> on a next note, which, um, I know that Mr. Cerulean always asked me about the cruise and it's been a couple weeks or almost a little over two months since an update has come in from the cruise sector. Uh, the rollout of um, cruise returning is highly dependent on uh, countries being vaccinated. The conversation is ongoing with the cruise sector. They are happy to hear that we have started our vaccination plan, and I encourage the public to continue going out and doing that. One of the requirements for the restart is that the entire crew of uh, the ships must be vaccinated before they come to shore. And um, the expected date that this will start will be May to June. We are still in discussions of home porting and making great progress there. One, the last item that I know many people are eagerly awaiting is uh, the extension of business hours. We are in the final stages 
for the update of the ministerial regulation, which was controlling the business hours as well as uh, encouraging and reminding everyone the guidelines of COVID-19 that we are also familiar with still. And as this will be in place as of next week, Friday, to go into effect, the ministerial regulation will be published this week once it is finalized, and we will be extending business hours to 4 a.m. as we start to get back more and more to normal. One thing that I would like to remind the public as well, which they have seen, is our low numbers. The lower our numbers stay, the faster we go from a higher rating, especially with the U.S. market, and go down to a lower risk rating so that we can actually welcome more people to our shores. Thank you very much. And I unfortunately have to leave at 10.30 for a 10.30 a.m. meeting, so I will not be available for questions after 10.30. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Thank you, Minister DeWeaver, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite the Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, the Honorable Richard Panaflick to address you. Minister Panaflick, you have the virtual floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to the members of the media, my esteemed colleagues of the Council of Ministers and the people of St. Martin. As of March 9, 2066, 76, sorry, persons had a laboratory confirmed COVID-19 infection um, positive test. To date, there have been 2,031 persons that have recovered from the COVID-19 and 27 persons have passed away, unfortunately. There are currently 18 cases that are being actively monitored by CPS. COVID testing. This is a reminder to the public that the CPS drive through testing is still open. However, due to the low testing volumes, the time has been adjusted. Anyone who experienced flu-like symptoms is encouraged to come to the drive through on Monday, Friday from the hours 8.30 in the morning till 10 o'clock. Weekend testing will remain by appointment only. I commend the public for helping us keeping our COVID cases low and do go and get yourselves tested. COVID-19 vaccination. As of March 9, over 7,000 have registered to receive the vaccine. Up to yesterday afternoon, there were about 2,498 persons vaccinated, where from 40, 456 were vaccinated yesterday. The vaccination team is looking to reach the 4,000 vaccine administered by next week so that we will receive the next batch of vaccines from the Netherlands, as was discussed yesterday during the fourth country meeting. Collectively, we need to work towards increasing this number. If you are unsure about the vaccine, discuss it with your family doctor. As a reminder, all persons are encouraged to register for the vaccine. Once you are registered, you will be invited by appointment based on the priority group in which you fall. This means that you, it will be more effectively for both you and the organization. Vaccination has already started for healthcare workers, persons 60 years and older, persons under 60 with certain underlying medical conditions. I also want to point out that there are now two vaccination locations, one at CPS Vineyard Building and the second at Bel Air Community Center. CPS will continue to engage with the community on any questions or concerns about the vaccination. CPS can be contacted through the 914 sorry, number. In effort to reduce further spread of virus, wear a mask, practice to meet the social distancing, sanitize and wash your hands, frequently and be cautious of large gatherings while we are working to get the um, percentage of immune system in our community through va uh, vaccination. If you are experiencing flu-like symptoms, stay at home and call your family doctor. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minister Panaflick, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Artswell Edion, to address you. Minister Edion, you have the virtual floor. Thank you, Malika. Good morning to you, my honorable colleagues, and the viewing public. First, I'd like to start on the tax. So far, we have sold, as I know Mr. Stephen Serena asked this question, I believe, a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, how many number plates have we sold so far? We have sold 22,909 number plates so far. For those of you that have not purchased their places yet, you should do so as soon as possible. 
In regards to the SRP, uh, first I can remind you that the portal for March income and unemployment support is open. The deadline, please, again, the deadline to apply is March 15th. So I advise you to apply today so that you can receive your payment on time. I've gotten a few questions in regards to the letter that the CFA uh, posted, I believe last week. In regard to that letter, I would like to say that the SRP payroll support from 2020, there is no backlog, but there are open cases awaiting for documentation. And those open cases relate to a mere 6% of the total cases. To be exact, those are 78 companies that are open cases, and they still have time to submit their missing documents and receive support. I urge all businesses to ensure that they are submitting the correct documentation to avoid having a delay in processing payments. The portal for payroll support will be opened next week, Monday. I'll also like to end this by thanking everyone involved with SRP and the teams that are making sure that this payment and process happens, and I appreciate your contribution. And without you, it wouldn't be done. Thank you. Or like that, I'll be off for now. Thank you, Minister Edion. At this time, I would like to invite the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, the Honorable Silvera Jacobs, to address you. Prime Minister Jacobs, you have the virtual floor. Thank you so much, Rolaika. Good morning to you, my colleague ministers, members of the press, you, Ms. Roach, of course, and to the listening and viewing public. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you know, uh, on Monday, we celebrated International Women's Day. And I must say, indeed, though we had decided to have virtual celebrations, I am happy to see that the uh, women's desk, as well as Prominent Women Foundation, changed their celebration to an in-person one. Though, because of my participation in the Walichi Politics panel discussion on Monday morning with others, I was unable to attend this wonderful event, which highlighted 20 honorees. And I'd like to commend them here once more, Ms. Asma Berko, Ms. Ava Williams, Ms. Jacqueline Berry, Mrs. Mary Bryson, Avril Gums, Olivia Murray, Silma Sarant, Napolina Richardson, Minerva Clement, Helena, Helen Christina Romeo, Rosemary Brown, Natasha Manuela, Gracia Landolf, Rina Hector, Hanisha A.J. Alwani, Amanda Vital Bedminister, Corinne Isaac, Mavlet Edwards, and Elise Templemans Platt. These were 20 women honored on Monday by the Women's Desk, which falls under the Ministry of VSA. And as much as um, we tried to collaborate, it didn't work out again this year. And based on the fact that together with the Vice President of the Collectivity, Ms. Valerie Damaso, we honored 50 women last year, and we wanted to continue with our Owilichi um, Women's Award. I chose Ms. Ava Lista de Weaver, which many would have noted already as our nominee and awardee for this year, 2021. Even though we are highlighting Ava, we also picked three women from within healthcare, Ms. Fena Arnell, who is the head of the health department, public health, Department of Public Health, Ms. Miguela Hassel Roland, a nurse at the St. Martin Medical Center, a young nurse, as well as legend in nursing, Ms. Brunilda Illich, who despite being retired is still working with CPS in support of COVID-19 response to this very day. I would love to take the time to honor all women. Of course, they are women throughout society. And as such, we will continue to honor various women across sectors throughout the month of March. So I ask you to stay tuned, to tune into our Facebook pages to see who these women will be. And I continue to encourage you in whatever um, sector of society that you are to honor women for what we bring to the table. And that I believe that true equality, the theme is choose to challenge. And I would encourage you all to choose to challenge any area where women and girls are not receiving equal treatment so that all can feel validated and be able to pursue their dreams. In other news for this week, the steering committee um, met on Friday, March 5th. This was a virtual high level meeting together with the Minister of Finance, Minister Irion, the steering committee of St. Martin 
uh, Recovery and Resilience Trust Fund, as well as State Secretary Knops from the Netherlands, Bezeka, and the World Bank, of course, Ms. Tassin Syed, as well as the other uh, steering committee members were in the meeting. The meeting was supported by the NRPB, and it was focused on the sustainability projects that are critical, critical for St. Martin's development, for the implementation of timelines, ensuring human capacity is available, as well as funding. This was the main takeaway for me um, in saying a few words in the meeting before allowing the technical part to continue. During the meeting, it was also agreed that the reconstruction of the airport is a critical one for St. Martin, as well as, of course, the getting moving, getting moving on the necessary um, on the necessary steps that need to be taken to remediate our dump, the EDMP and waste management. As such, the government reiterated our commitment um, also with the decisions we'd made that week in the Council of Ministers to ensure that the appropriate conditions for reconstruction would continue, as well as um, enabling and upholding good governance across the board. The Council of Ministers also approved a uh, brand new uh, roadmap for the realization of the emergency um, debris management project. So I look forward to being updated and ensuring that we are closely monitoring all actions that St. Martin has to take to ensure that the projects can um, continue to move forward and in fact accelerate. I also like to update the general public on meetings that were held last week uh, between our organization, so government's organization, and the TWO, which is the temporary work organization for the coming to agreements on the implementation package. The meetings uh, were um, held right here in St. Martin. Two of the representatives from BZK were here, the project man manager as well as an advisor and they met with our organization, which is the SG platform, all of the SGs of government, as well as the key personnel within each ministry working on the measures or the uh, objectives related to the measures that we have agreed to, which I presented in Parliament a couple of weeks ago. We hope to have, I believe that from all aspects, I was also updated by the monitoring committee um, earlier this week, and I was able to get a good impression of the meetings held. Uh, we hope to have the implementation document ready for public consumption before the deadline of the end of the month to have it established on time for April 1st. So this week, hopefully, the SG platform will have their final go at it. Their meetings are usually on Wednesdays. Thereafter, it will come to the Council of Ministers and then be forwarded on for further approvals, et cetera, so that we can achieve the date which we had set as a deadline of April 1st. Of course, I will also be returning to Parliament during the course of between now and then to ensure that we have an in-depth and hearty discussion on the further questions that had been asked on the country packages, as well as the now draft implementation plan whereby we will be able to have better understanding of St. Martin's input, as well as the execution of such. Also on Friday, I attended with uh, ministers Arian and Doran, the opening or the, yeah, the grand opening with APS of the RX residences located in Key Hill. This is indeed a great accomplishment, which took several years and was only made possible due to the land um, being granted um, to APS for a significant um, gilder, for a um, symbolic gilder, so that these units could be built. They are now providing 60 families with the opportunities to be homeowners, and I congratulate APS and the government of St. Martin on this initiative. I'd like to also congratulate the residents of Oryx for taking the steps to own their own homes. You are indeed a part of a bigger vision for our country where local middle class St. Martiners born here and born to be here can afford to own their own home. I know some of them are still on their way in a lease to own situation and I encourage there are only a few more units left 
for those that had applied to follow up to see if you are able to still um, make this part of your dream come true of home ownership on St. Martin. That is also part of us moving toward a more sustainable economy and more persons um, investing in our, or in our society will make that possible. So I encourage those of you out there to get your finances in order, manage your debt so that you can qualify and be able to move on to that level as well. I'd like to add my um, statements to those of the Minister of VSA to encouraging the residents of St. Martin to register online for the COVID-19 vaccine, visiting the government's website, www.stmartingov.org forward slash coronavirus. Um, paper versions of the registration form are available at Collective Prevention Services, at various doctor's offices, at the Government Administration Building, Labor Affairs, as well as the Public Service Center in Simpson Bay and select pharmacies. I really hope that we can ensure that as many people as possible get vaccinated so that we can slowly return to normal. I'm very happy to see that our numbers are going down, but I do not want people to think that now that we can become complacent because we're having the vaccine distributed as well as seeing our numbers go down. We must continue to practice good hygiene, stay healthy, exercise regularly, and ensure to get enough rest. Continue to avoid large gatherings as much as possible and maintain proper face mask usage, especially when you cannot be, um, when you cannot avoid being more than two meters or six feet away from other persons. I want to thank you for your attention thus far. Remember, continue to choose to challenge as we celebrate women throughout this month. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs, for your opening remarks. If you've just joined us, you are watching the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Thank you for joining us. We now move on to the question and answer session. The virtual floor is open and Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and the ministers that are present Today, as women recognize women for International Day, I, I got to recognize the Prime Minister. Honestly, I believe the, the Prime Minister is very great. So, Prime Minister, let me go on with the question now. Uh, Prime Minister, as a strong woman, often time you have been engaging with back to back these days with. Um, accusation um you are you are stopping the mr bryson from become from the from the process to continue ministers minister um and you also respond and said but there's not emergency i mean how does this how does this make you feel you know as a prime minister and there are more important matters a situation on st martin to, to deal with how these kind of statements and the rhetorics make you feel time to time? Thank you for the question and thank you for your well wishes. Um, for me, yeah. In Dutch, there's an expression, they say, hoge bomen vangen veel wind. So palm trees get a lot of breeze. They will sway in the wind, but we usually don't break. I'm not going to take anything personal that's said out there in social media or even in the regular media. Um, everyone is allowed to have their opinions. Those that have the facts know what the facts are, and I have stuck to the facts when dealing with the public, especially about people's private business, and I do not make it a habit of going into the personal lives of others. Sometimes I get drawn in, but I'm learning day by day to allow naysayers to be what they are. The, the young people call them the haters that they will continue to be there. We cannot please everybody all the time. I do my best to take the necessary decisions in the best interest of the greater good of this country. So I will leave that right there where it is. Um, I think when people want to know the personal business of anyone, they should go directly to the source and not try to get secondhand news. Um, further to that, there are much more important things that we should be dealing with. So I leave the, the forum for that. 
Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs. I would now like to invite Jeffrey Sokran of Isle 92 Radio. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, Rilaika. Good morning to all of the members of the council, the ministers that are present today, and good morning to my fellow members of the media. Uh, Mr. Panafleck, um, I was hoping you might, able, might be able to help me with something. I think it is safe to say that um, the more people we vaccinate, the better. And while we have a little more than 7,000 people that have registered, we are working down a priority uh, based system. And there are lots of people that are registered, yet um, they're, they're not on the, the list of prioritized groups at the moment. Is there, is there a, a line of thought, a school of thinking that says, if someone has registered now that we've taken care of our top priority, the elderly and our first line, our frontline medical workers, that we should be vaccinating as many people that are eligible um, or have registered and are willing to be vaccinated um, as soon as possible. In other words, let's if someone wants to be vaccinated, they've registered, let's vaccinate them now regardless of their age. Is there any is there any thinking that says we might go down that path? Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Sarkarin. Um, thank you for the question. The issue with just not vaccinated, whoever registered, just like that is the following. There was an agreement that the Pfizer vaccine, seeing that it have the, with the experience, both theoretically and out of practice, has shown it's the more effective one for the elderly, in this case, 60 plus. Um, and you need to have two shots of every vaccine. It's not so that you can use, get, like I have said before, like the uh, management team have indicated before, that you can get a vaccine from one brand and then the second, second time from another brand. It has to be from the same brand. That's why seeing the Pfizer had come for the 60 plus, it was also indicated that um, the wishes are high for the medical healthcare workers to also be vaccinated, seeing that they are the ones that are in contact with the, the, many, the bigger group of population that might have or are um, affected by the coronavirus and might um, develop the COVID disease. So that's the reason why it's not going out. I mean, if there was only one vaccine, you're right then it would make no difference. You, you register, you come, you take, you will give the appointment for the second one and you come back. And then we will do as much as possible. But because of um, the issue of which brand we got right now and making sure that whoever gets vaccinated will get their second one out of the same brand, that's why there is grouping going along. Yes, we want people to register. We want people to register as much as possible. Everybody that wants to be registering, we make the availability by both via um, online registration and we have also hard copies that people can register to. Um, we hope and we are aiming that as more people get vaccinated and people hear about that, we will make more promotions also about it. Um, we have asked some very influential people in our community if they are willing to work with it. Some take pictures and all those kind of thing and, and they were willing. So we will be um, bringing out some promos very, um, very soon um, to get vaccinated. I mean, um, I myself, I took the, the morning yesterday and I went to both locations and personally inform myself of the situation. There are people coming in, there were large gatherings, like I said, there was almost 500 people back that got vaccinated yesterday. They will continue today again. Um, later after this press briefing, I will go and sure. And 
to see and make sure that the people get vaccinated. What, I have, what I'm pleased about, um, even though we, while working on the number, is that I see people of all the nationalities that form the community of St. Martin coming forward and getting vaccinated. So it is not that you see it's only the locals or it's only this ethnic group or that. All of them are coming forward and um, getting vaccinated. And naturally, we would like more people, a vast majority, all if possible, to register and then they will be called up. Um, also, I have to say that um, we as human beings, the normal human beings, where we're working, we cannot get everything done in on one day. But still, we will work hard to get everybody that registered vaccinated as soon as possible. I, I get people asking me, Minister, I registered, but they didn't call me back. I tell them they will call you back. Sometimes I call the, 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 the management team, ask them if they got this person registered and things like that. But then, most of the time, before I can get back to the person telling them about the result, they was getting called and um, invited to come over. So it's work in progress that's being done. If we all, all decide to give a helping hand by promoting people to register in a very short time, I believe that we all will get um, the necessary um, people um, called and vaccinated so that we will build a herd community and St. Martin will have sufficient um, protection that all these wishes of these people, um, of the people that wants to open up more, so, uh, um, I will leave that for that, um, that we can come to normal. And one thing too, yesterday I had a, a, a meeting and I was in a conversation. And one of the things that I would like to ask everybody, so you are also as the media, Please promote St. Martin with our figures and our unit as one of the safest places right now that you can travel to. We have a pro good protocol in place for any visitors, what they have to bring in their um, negative test, that they are not uh, infected by COVID, and we are um, doing our best with the help of the community to keep our figures um, positive figures, very low. We started with a, the immune campaign. So maybe that is also a way that we can help um, the totality of the community and get our tourists back on our shores and that the economy can boost up. I would like to thank you. Thank you, Minister Panaflek, and thank you, Dr. Sock, for the question. I would now like to invite Stephen Cerulean of PJ82 Radio. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to you, Prime Minister. Ministers, good morning to you as well as my as well as my colleagues. If I may continue with the Minister of VSA. Minister, two yesterday over 2,000 persons had already taken the COVID-19 vaccine, and some 7,000 odd persons have registered, you said, to be vaccinated. In the past, we know that. Um, the COVID-19 infection is relatively high among men, as has been reported. Are you in the position to say what percentage of persons vaccinated are males? Thank you, Mr. Cerulean. A very good question. Um, if you may or may have not know, um, TPS have started to um, issue not only information, but has also developed with DECOM a chart of vaccination so that people can see how much um, persons registered, how much people have um, received the vaccination, and how much um, people, so the tally will continue adding up as more people got vaccinated. The one from yesterday, I have to say that the Bel Air amount wasn't added up to it, but this is something while we're working to get um, progress and everything put in place. Um, I will 
look into it that from the data that at least weekly we can report the percentage of people um, of male sex or of female sex who got vaccinated and perhaps as time go by we also like we did before for for the covid to sh um, to to send out the information about the different age brackets that are being vaccinated and that we have vaccinated so we can give like i always said i am very open and transparent all information that i get that is not personal of uh, individual for the public consumption or for, for, for the information part of it i will share that with you thank you Thank you, Minister Panaflik, and thank you, Stephen, for the question. I would now like to invite Bibi Shaw of SMN News. You have the virtual floor. Good morning, Rulaika. Good morning, ministers and colleagues. Um, I'll call upon Minister De Weaver because I think she said she's leaving at 10.30, so before she gets to that hour, I'll see if she's still there. Bibi, unfortunately, Minister De Weaver has already left the meeting, so you would have to either send that question in writing and then just pose another question right now. All right, um, then I'll take the Minister of Education, Minister Samuel. Good morning, Minister Samuel. Minister, I, if I remember co correctly, late December or January, I asked you about the Dutch exams that people that want to get naturalized. You promised me that you will look into it. Just recently, I called you again, and we have just published letters from people that have been waiting since, that paid their money since to 18 to 19. They're claiming that they are being disrespected, um, you know, when they go to see when will they get to, to be able to take this ex exam. Some people are stating there that there is discrimination. You already said you do not have an answer for me, but I'm kindly asking you to look into this matter uh, because people pay their money and if they pay their money, they should be allowed to take the exams. Um, the other question I want to ask you, um, Minister Samuel, uh, there are a number of parents that have contacted me regarding um, their children going to school for face-to-face -face learning. And while the children will be in classroom, teachers are not reporting to work face-to-face. -face. These teachers prefer to stay home and teach from their homes. What efforts are being made by the ministry to get teachers back into the classroom? Thank you, Bibi, for the two-part question. The first part question, I believe we have already indicated that the naturalization exams would have already started in January. I can get to back to you next week in order to, to let you know how far we are with that. The other indications that you are giving of, of persons who are not getting to do the naturalization exams, I would look into that. I will make contact with you in order to get that update on, in, on, this, on out, uh, outside of this forum because it can possibly be personal matters. And then I will take that up with the division that is handling those exams. The other question in regards to face-to-face, -face, I remembered that um, your colleague, Dr. Sock, did make a question in regards in that direction uh, in last week press briefing, in which I indicate to him that I would be making a decision this week regarding face-to-face. -face. And indeed, the decision is being done as we speak. I am busy with it with the department in order to decide how we are going to move forward, seeing that the numbers of uh, active cases in the community are very low. I will not give you at this moment, let us say what the answer is, because I did agree with the stakeholders, that is the school boards, that I communicate to them first so that they can be prepared um, into which direction we will go. But by, by the ending of this week, next week, and the beginning of next week, you would know how we are going to do face to face. Now, when you say teachers refuse to 
go face to face, then that is a whole different type of, um, of information you are bringing forward. Um, the question would then be, um, how, what do you mean that the teacher refused? Did their school manager call them and they say no? Or did they tell you they don't want to go? Uh, teachers refusing and that type of statement is very broad. However, I will look at it. I don't know which teacher, which school board, which school. So it makes it very challenging to handle a question like that. So that question too, I don't mind if we can discuss it uh, after the after the press briefing in order to get a more precise uh, indication as to which school, which school board you're referring to, and then we can uh, look into um, the matter. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Samuel, and thank you, Bibi, for the question. We now move on to the second round of questions. Linda Brown, you have the virtual floor. Question to Minister Pantaflec. Minister, as this is very serious, Minister. As let me, as I introduce my question, there's a fire that's been burning, not at the dump, but at the Rosenwald Casino. Minister, name have been called, but I cannot mention no name right now. A young lady have been working at the Rosenwald Casino for over 30 years and now is out of a job, Minister. I understand you have some formula, formula, familiarization of this situation. Because presently now, the problem is at the labor office, at the labor department. Minister, can you tell, are you reaching some conclusion with this matter? Ah, what do you, what do you know about the situation, Minister? Thank you, Mr. Brown, for the question. Uh, let's get something clear. You stated that I know about it because it's by labor office. I can tell you, Mr. Brown, it don't work like that. I have a ministry that where complaints are filed are dealing with complaints. And what I need to know when the decision or advice is being made up will be sent up to the minister. Makes no difference if it's me as this person or whoever. That's how ministries work and how government works. If you would like, like I heard with, um, uh, my colleague before me telling um, Mr. Shaw, you could contact me and then relate to me the information that you possess and I will check through the ministry what it's uh, um, information we have in the ministry and what is the status of that and work on it. I hope that I have clarified and answered your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Minister Panafleck, and thank you, Lyndon, for the question. I would now like to invite Jeffrey Sokrin. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, uh, Minister uh, Panafleck. Uh, first of all, thank you for all of your, your hard efforts um, during this pandemic. It has been, I think, a challenge for everyone in the world and ministers of health are no uh, no exception especially here on our shores has there been any thought um, from your vantage point as minister of health and from the ministry and from a health a public health perspective um, once visitors to our shores can show that they have been vaccinated fully with one of the COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccinations, um, that we may, that we will amend our travel requirements to visit the shores of St. Martin. And then uh, secondly, along, along those similar lines, has there been any thought from your ministry from a public health perspective about revisiting the countries that are currently on the banned list that are not permitted to travel uh, directly to St. Martin? Thank you, Minister Panaflag. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Sokren, for the question. Um, gave me the opportunity to give some more clarity. Worldwide, the nations, countries, 
states are also working to post COVID, after COVID, what to do. Um, let me take the opportunity to give the next example. Many years ago, polio used to be something that is very dangerous for human health. If you, I think, um, you and me experience it, you had a card that you took your vaccinations. With time, the amount of polio cases in the world was reduced to the bare minimum Whereas if it's not a country where it still exists in some kind of form, hardly when you travel will they ask you for your passport and your polio card. And I'm sure with time when worldwide we get this COVID under control, that will reach the day that that will be the case too. But for now, as we getting more and more vaccinated, it's not alone about St. Martin. It is about a world. This is a pandemic. This is just not just a, um, a disease that is on St. Martin. It is a pandemic because it's worldwide and it's huge. So you will get first the steps naturally that I see because I follow international news also. I see that our kingdom partners, um, the Netherlands, have started to produce again what they call the vaccination book. It's a yellow book, looks like a passport, but it's just for the vaccination recording. So yes, in the future, not too far future, because this is a dynamic process. And naturally we are thinking about our economy, people have to work, people have to eat, people have to do all the things. People have to travel so that we will introduce something like that. But for the time being, all of those that got vaccine will receive a card with not only their name and their info, but also the date that they received the vaccine, which if we go as even so far of which file you get the vaccine and the date that you have to come for the next time so that you need the second vaccine. So yes. Dr. Mr. Sakharin, we will be working, are working, thinking, and how to do it best because it will have to be something that will be recognized for, um, especially if you travel. Um, as you know, the world has evolved so much that most of um, um, people have uh, have the information on their smartphones. So you need to um, 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 develop a methodology that is accepted so that the people can use that once they are vaccinated. Because um, even I didn't get the message yet, but I'm pretty sure that there will be countries for you to travel to them. In the near future, you will need to have some proof that you are vaccinated if you don't want to continue doing the PCR test um uh, nasal swapping and all those kind of things I, I hope it was um clear if not let me know thank you thank you minister very clear and uh, what about our restricted country list countries that are not allowed to travel to st martin is there any thinking that we're going to start to revisit that list and revise it uh um, yes thank you for that also um, we are constantly um, looking out at the figures and the, the um, of these countries because yes, we would like to come to a no, um, the normal normality as soon as possible. But also, we have to take in, um, in consideration the risk factor. As long as it's high, and it might even um, affect our status of what I asked you just now to promote that we are uh, relatively one of the safest right now in the atmosphere that we do not bite ourselves in the foot by opening to those banned countries that at the present moment still have high risk 
that we will lose others that say, wait, wait, if you are accepting people from those um, um, parts of the world, I'll prefer to go somewhere else or stay home because I don't want to be um, um, having the risk that I might get infected. So it is a constant, what I've been saying from the beginning, it's a constant um, balancing out, managing risk, and see what's best for the people of St. Martin, the community, and its um, um, tourists that is coming to this show. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister Panafleck, and thank you, Dr. Stock, for the question. Members of the media, this will be the final round of questions. I would now like to invite Stephen Cerulean. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Uh, my question is for the minister responsible for ECYS, Dr. Andres Willow Samia. Uh, Mr. It is uh, reported that there is a shortage of teachers at the Milton Peters College. As a result, this has been having a negative impact on students. Um, has that situation been brought to your attention? If yes, what is being done to remedy the situation? Thank you, Mr. Cerulean. Mr. Cerulean, um, the question is very broad. So, you know, at Milton Peters College, you have the various schools, the Taker L, PBL, uh, you also have the MAVO, the HAVO. So I will look into that question to see which school we are referring to and what is the possibility um, of why a teacher is absent and, and, and what is exactly the, the situation regarding that. And I will get back to you with the answer. And, and if you can please call me after the press briefing that we can discuss maybe more specifically, um, because if you say teachers absent, I would need to know exactly like in which direction to go. Thank you. Shortage of teachers at the MPC. Shortage. Okay. We will we will we will discuss this. Thank you, Minister Samuel, and thank you, Stephen, for the question. I would now like to invite BB Shaw. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, Relika. I call on the Prime Minister. Um, Prime Minister Jacobs. Good morning again. Is she there? Prime Minister Jacobs. Um, I, I'm asking you the question because normally you're the one that meets with your counterpart on the front side. Um, just moments ago, our colleague, your colleague minister, um, the Weaver, was speaking about, you know, finalizing the discussions with getting tours and crews back to St. Martin. And of course, we are open. Yes, we have a list of, of, of countries that cannot come, but we are still calling on people to come here because we are practically a safe destination. However, when you look at the 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 um the vaccination, the amount of persons already vaccinated on the Dutch side that started at least two or three weeks after the French side, the Dutch side already more than doubled the amount of people that is vaccinated on the French side. What um, discussions have been taking place between the two sides of the island and how is it uh, how are you able to convince the front side or to get the people on the front side, the ARS especially, to at least work the way that that side is working to be able to convince its people to take the vaccination. Thank you for that question, um, BB. Good morning to you as well. Um, indeed, the discussions that we lastly held with the Prefet and the ARS, uh, that was two weeks ago, I believe. There is another meeting coming up soon. Um, there's a lot of discussions in ways we can collaborate, but I must say the ARS and CPS have been in constant collaboration and discussion. Um, let's say the negative uh, image around taking the vaccination is higher on a friend side apparently. And so we were having discussions and they are um, looking to collaborate in the communication towards the general public. As you know, um, some media outlets cater to both sides, etc. So they will be expanding the sensitization, the information, because we believe information is power. 
to the population in various languages. That is also being done on the French side. So we're looking at the Creoles, the Spanish, etc., to ensure that a wider range of persons have more information. Um, we believe on the Dutch side, especially, that um, though it's not part of our protocols, I think it's one of the little mistakes we made, that our population looks to its leaders. And um, many are saying, well, if you don't take it, I don't take it, for instance. And I must say that after I took it, several people were then a little more confident about it. We've seen in the United States, the leaders there also were in the first group to take it as a way of encouraging the population as to its safety. Um, again, I've had it. My next um, dosage will be on the 16th, and we are collaborating together with our French counterparts to ensure that we send the, the message out jointly. I really wish that we could have um, adjusted the protocol, but you know, it's not my purview, it's not uh, in my hands. I do allow professionals in the medical field to continue to progress, and of course, the management as well as the providers of the vaccine want to stick to the protocols that were agreed upon initially. So um, I do see that now it's opening up for more persons to take it. So the most we can do is ramp up our promotion, which we are doing. I think you may have noticed already some graphics are coming out. And as more people see the, 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 the injection in the needle going up, I love that graphic using the, the needle itself to show that it's going up people will be encouraged. And as they have family members on the front side, they can then encourage their family members to do the same. What I'd like to say is that CPS noted that for the amount of seniors we have on the island, which are some of the most vulnerable and our first group, um, a small percentage came out. So I would like to encourage those persons who have seniors and loved ones in their lives to encourage them to sign up, encourage them to register, because not because we move on to the next level, it means that the seniors cannot still register and come forth. As long as seniors register, they will get immediate attention. So I would like to encourage all persons out there with senior family members that you love. We want to protect them. We want them to be the first to be covered. So please get them out to register, get them the forms, help them to register, even those who may not have internet, et cetera, provide a ride to the vaccination spot so that we can get our seniors protected. I think those are the most, and of course, people with underlying issues are our most vulnerable, and we really want them to get that vaccine first. So we will be continuing to collaborate. And um, actually, I must say, between the collectivity and myself, we have been talking already over the past year about finding some type of platform under which we can meet regularly and take decisions that affect the full population. Because of our differences in governance and constitutional status, that can be a challenge. So we had a proposal from the front side. I've gotten feedback from uh, my interior affairs um, uh, personnel department, Buck, and um, hopefully by the 23rd of March, we can jointly say something. As you know, March 23rd is the recognition of Treaty of Concordia Day. Um, not St. Martin Day, but the day, that day when the Dutch and French decided to share this island and sign documents to such. And we believe we have a long way to go in getting more, more let's say, signed off on agreements that are current and relevant for today with our laws being what they are. And that is a goal of both the Collectivité and myself. And I must say this preface seems to be open to better collaboration as well. And so in my next meeting, we will be seeing how the collaboration has borne fruit since our last meeting. And once I have that info, I'll update you further. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs, and thank you, Bibi, for the question. Members of the media, this does bring us to the end of the question and answer session. Once again, thank you for joining us. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, radio listeners, and online viewers, this brings us to the end of the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. For rebroadcast, tune in to St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM, the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin, the YouTube channel Government of St. Martin, and St. Martin Cable TV Channel 115. For rebroadcast, tune in to stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, I'm Rolika Roach and wishing you a pleasant day further.